Hi, I'm Mark Claiborne, and uh, today I'm joined by Hardy, the worldwide distributor for Trigger Smart. And I thought we'd just give a kind of a quick introduction into the product because it's uh, it's beginning to take over a lot of photographers' kind of creative lives, whether mm -hmm. they're in a small room or out on location. Really, tell us a little bit about it. Yes, it's a, um, a unique product in as much that it represents a kit that allows you to trigger your camera by breaking a light beam, an infrared light beam or uh, it can be triggered by sound, so a sudden increase in sound, or a sudden increase in light intensity. So uh, it opens up a whole host of possibilities to take pictures from wildlife to glass shattering, uh, special effects in commercial photography, uh, and drop photography, which is still very, very popular with people. It's a very exciting area, uh, even for fine art photography. So. It's a unique kit, it's very affordable, and it comes complete. There's no other accessories needed, except for possibly a short camera adapter cable. Okay. But everything else is in the box. So basically what we've got here is a... Two sensors, okay. yeah, uh, and they're dual purpose. Um, the sensors are either infrared transmitter, receiver, and then they're opposite each other like this. Okay. And then individually, one of them is light intensity sensitive. Lightning. Lightning, for instance, yeah. fireworks and so on. Okay. And the other one has got a microphone built in, so it reacts to sudden increase of sound. Shattering. So shattering, shots, hand clapping, okay. all, all kinds of sudden increases. Great. And uh, the necessary cables and accessories to, to work those. The little tripods come with the kit as well, isn't it? Yeah, the tripods come with it, so they can be used on their own, and quite often they're very useful because you have the ball and socket built in. Excellent. So you clamp it, stake it, tape it, you know, in whatever position this is needed. Yeah. Brilliant. And then the cables that will come from, uh, from the, the little box of tricks, as it were, yeah. come into these. Um, Cable to each each of them, obviously triggering, firing, yes. whatever it does, yes. Yeah. And then you've got another ca a cable that goes out to the camera trigger yeah. as such. In, initially in the kit you get three cables, two of them are to connect the control box to the two sensors and one of them to connect to your camera. Um, there are accessories available, for instance we have a battery operated infrared transmitter which eliminates at least one cable okay. and, and other accessories will be available very shortly. Great. But the kit itself comes complete a lot of possibilities. It's only a specific cameras as such if you need a cable to actually go into the yeah. triggering board. Yeah, um, there's a cable in there that will fit a multitude of cameras on the market, but then there are also many which need a special a multi pin adapter. Which are readily adapter. Readily They're readily available. available. So, what yeah. have we got the difference in here now? One's sensitivity, one is trigger yeah. delay, and the other is trigger time. So exactly. Can you just talk it's us through? Quite simple. This is the sort of the heart of the system, and that allows you to set the sensitivity here, i.e., you have to allow for the ambient light level or the ambient sound level um, so that the sensors can react to anything that is over and above that. So that's the sensitivity level here. You simply turn that until the light comes on and that's when you know you've set it correctly. Okay. The second control is a, uh, a trigger delay because sometimes you might not want to fire the camera immediately after the event that triggered it. You might want an object to move a little bit further or an explosion to allow the, the sort balloon. of debris, yeah, yeah. the balloon going off. So you can delay your shutter from actually capturing the image. Okay. And the last one is uh, uh, control over how long you want to fire a camera. And that could be a single shot for a one-off event, or it could be a sequence of shots if your camera is set to the sports mode, for instance, so you can have a sequence of several shots. And indeed, if you have a video camera capturing the event, you can set a certain time span over which you want the video to capture the, the event that you're photographing. Great, but this is battery powered, so it's fully por uh, portable wherever yes, we are, isn't exactly. It? Most are. people will want to use it battery powered because you want to be on location and get rid of as many cables as possible. Um, there are four AA cells in there, and uh, for people who work in the studio at home, in the laboratory, you can also get a mains adapter, um, especially if you're photographing events that take place over a long period of time, be it a night or a day, whatever, then the mains adapter is probably good idea. Uh, uh, better than, than battery power. Very good. Well, I think we should see it in practice. So let's get yes, into the Yeah, let's experiment. Yeah. yeah, have a fun. So for this first setup, we're using the infrared beam. Um, so as the strawberry, as you'll see, drop through it, cuts the beam, it fires the flash um, by obviously triggering the camera. 
Um, kind of a simple setup that we've got going on here. As you can see on each side, we've got the, un uh, the units. And as we break the beam again, the first one is to set the mirror up for me. Second one is to fire the shot. Uh, we've got an option while we're cleaning up between as well to actually disarm the, un uh, the unit so it's not going to fire each time. But um, kind of a simple al alignment here. Uh, we decided to hire them up onto the little boxes just a little bit higher to actually hel help us get a bigger splosh, bigger splash, because obviously it is dependent on the weight of the product coming down. As far as the, light, the lighting is concerned, uh, we've basically got a simple quantum uh, behind us here on its minimum power, uh, and that is just being given, giving some illumination to the grey background. The reason we're using it on the minimum power is to uh, give us a very, very fast flash duration, so a very, very sharp flash uh, is going to be created. Everything's going to look really, really tight. We're using 640 um, ISO, and we're using F5.6, but we might want to use it at, I don't know, 400, F16, whatever you want to do, but obviously that's going to increase the flash power. I decided to add in a secondary light, uh, which was the little soft, the soft box with another quantum here again, once more set to the minimum power. Um, the reason being was to add just that little bit of kind of colour to the, stra uh, the strawberry because it's quite a monochromatic kind of image otherwise. So the simple setup is uh, the, sen uh, the sensors here, when we cut through it, it fires the flash, it sends the trigger first of all once we cut the beam to the box, this then sends it sig the signal to the, ca uh, the camera, fires the camera of course, the camera fires the flash, we've got the shot, simple as that. Good one. Okay, get it in. Good shot. Okay, it's ready for you. Perfect splosh. So looking at the master control box, what we first got, of course, is the sensitivity. Uh, this is used across all the sensors to obviously see the light, the sound, uh, and the motion uh, within the image. The sen sensitivity dial is just used so you kind of tur turn it up to match what is in the ambient light or sound, and then you basically turn it back that little bit and then it's ready to shoot. It couldn't be any quicker than that. So this is all about controlling the ambience that is in the room or on the scene, and then actually overriding it by controlling the sensitivity down just a touch. We use the trigger delay, um, as it says really, to delay the camera from firing as soon as the, uh, the kind of the box of tricks tells the camera to fire. So it's that little bit of delay from when either the beam, the sound, or the uh, light intensity is telling the camera to fire, it's just that little delay before we actually take the photograph. And the trigger timer I've been using when I'm in the sports mode, so in other words, I want to take multiple exposures of the same shot, but with one trigger in, and I can just increase the amount of time. So it, it simulates my finger on the trigger button. So in other words, when it fires, it'll keep firing until I lift my finger off. Unlike when I'm in single shot mode, of course, as soon as the beam or the sound or the motion is triggering the camera to fire, it would obviously only just shoot the one shot. So in this section with the trigger smart, we're using the light sensor option. Uh, in other words, what we've kind of set up for is a low ambient light in the scene here, and we're going to trigger it with just a simple flame. Because the sudden increase, obviously set with the sensitivity on the control box, all of a sudden it's going to allow us to shoot and shoot continuously. And what I've got is two quantums off to the side here, both on minimum power, which are going to allow us to shoot quite fast and the fastest frames per second using the 7D. So what I mean by that is, for, for, first of all, we'll just demonstrate it with a, li a lighter. And as you can see, just that simple flick of the flame instantly allows it to shoot. It's triggered into the camera. The camera. We've got the camera set on the high um, shutter speed and, and also like the sports mode, but it's a multiple exposure with it. The only difference what we've done now, we've taken off the mirror lock because if it was in mirror lock, it won't allow the camera to fire so much. 
So what we're using is a little bit of a magician's kind of trick here, a little bit of pa a paper that we're going to light, and of course using uh, Carl as our guinea pig because he's burned his hand several times, I promise you. So don't do this at home. Um, just the kind of the the kind of the flick there to give us that cool effect. So once more, some, something that would be very difficult to do by using flash and um, ambient light within the scene to get the perfect shot each time. Great use of the trigger smart. Okay. Anytime. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. But it, you've taken away your hand with a lighter. Okay. I need to turn to the side though, okay? Yeah. Okay. So in this next section, uh, we've been using the sound sensitivity on the trigger smart. So uh, what you can be seeing is the after effects here in front of me of uh, shooting a glass with powder in and also a cup with water and uh, setting the camera on to the kind of the sports mode, the, the high shots per second, uh, which was going to record it's going through. But of course, the camera is being triggered by the sensor itself. So the sensor is close to the gun. The sensitivity on the um, Trigger Smart was set, so when it hears the gun, it fires, and because I was in the multi-shoot mode, uh, it's going to fire until it stops as far as the length of time that I'm giving it. Uh, and that obviously, again, is set on the uh, Trigger Smart itself. So uh, pretty cool of effects, I think you'll find, and uh, considering this is the very first time I've used it, I think the results that we've got with really no kind of preparation are pretty incredible. So uh, again, uh, watch this next series, and you'll see how much fun it is. Okay, let's um, fill the wine glass, is it, with powder. Look though, we got it. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Plug it in. Missed it. It was good. It was close. You break it. Go on. That's quite cool, in fact. Grazed it. Great. Took it. Well done. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are worrying about. One, one more on the step. Go on then. <laughs> one more each. That's nice. Oh, that's a nice sequence there, Hardy. What? That's love, lovely. So that was a great few fun hours in the studio with Trigger Smart. Yeah. Uh, considering I've never used it before, I was really impressed with the kind of results that Good. I got straight out of it. And even though there's other accessories available for it, I believe, we were mm -hmm. just using the yeah. standard kit. That was the standard kit. Everything you get in the box ready to use for three different trigger modes. Yeah, brilliant. A lot of opportunities. I soon got into the hang of actually the sensitivity and the trigger mm -hmm. delay and so on. Um, and obviously if I was using the, mul the multiple kind of sports mode style of shooting, of sh shooting uh, the time delay, so obviously we could actually have that extended time of what it was yeah. photographing for. Brilliant. Where, where can they find the information out about uh, it? Yeah, that's all on our website, flaghead.co.uk. There are picture samples and uh, instructions can be downloaded, uh, a whole set of information on there, enough for what you need, yeah.
Brilliant. And you can also go into Flickr and actually see some of the results. From yes, that well. go Flickr. to Flickr, search for Trigger Smart. There's loads of examples by existing users. Very, very good photography, yes. Brilliant. Well, I've had fun with it. Thanks very much indeed. Okay, thank you. I'm Mark Clegg with Trigger Smart. See you next time. Bye bye.